Hey, my name is Colby, and I've been making Starlink YouTube videos on this channel for years, and along the way, you learn some things, not only through helping others, but through my own personal experience as a Starlink customer. So in today's video, I wanted to share some of my top tips that every Starlink owner should know to get the most reliability and performance out of their system. And let's jump right in, and I'm on the roof actually for this first shot because I wanted to talk about the first tip which is find a good mounting location. Now, in my opinion, this is critical because this will determine the overall performance and reliability of your Starlink internet connection. Now, as you can see, I have my dish here mounted on the peak of my roof. Starlink is satellite internet after all. It's constantly talking with the satellites that are orbiting overhead. Starlink antenna has about a 110 degree field of view, so it can electronically track satellites that are constantly whizzing overhead through a phased array antenna, right? It's not like your traditional like direct TV satellite antenna that's pointing in a specific area and talking to a stationary geosynchronous satellite. No, Starlink works much differently. So it's important to give your antenna a clear view of the sky. It needs to see most of that 110 degree field of view. Any trees or buildings or any other thing that's blocking any part of the satellite signal, those are what Starlink calls obstructions and that can cause interruptions to your Starlink service. Now, generally, I do recommend you install it at the peak of your roof because usually that's the highest structure on your property and also try to get it as furthest away horizontally from trees as you can, especially if you have tall ones nearby. Now, you may be wondering, how the heck do I find a good mounting location? Well, Starlink makes it pretty easy. I recommend downloading the Starlink app on your smartphone and using a tool called the Obstruction Scanner. So if you go into your phone, and you open up this obstruction scanner, it'll have you use your smartphone's camera to actually scan the sky. So you just take it and you scan all around. And this will give you a result that tells you if this is gonna be a suitable location or not. And as you can see on this one, it's gonna tell me I have good experiences and basically no obstructions for streaming video, web browsing, video calls, online gaming. If you hit this little information icon, it gives you a percentage. So I, you can see at the bottom here, it says this location is 0.03 obstructed. So that is perfect and that's exactly what you want. A completely clear view of the sky will give you the best chance at a fast and reliable Starlink internet connection. While we're on the topic of mounting and installing your Starlink, the next tip that I have for you is to go ahead and plan in advance how you wanna route your Starlink cable. So with Starlink, you have the dish that's mounted up on top of the roof, and then you have the router and power supply that you typically mount inside your home. And there's a single cable, it's an ethernet cable that provides power and data between the two devices. So you'll really need to route the cable down the side of your home and through a hole inside your house. So you wanna plan out in advance because you may need a longer cable than what the Starlink kit provides. Every Starlink kit comes with a 50 foot or about 15 meter cable that you can use, but if you need a longer one, Starlink also has longer options available. They have a 150 foot version of that cable in the store if you need more than that, and you can also use third party aftermarket cables if you need somewhere in between. So go ahead and measure the distance that you'll need to be able to run that cable, to be able to install the router where you want it inside your home. Now, one accessory that I really highly recommend that you pick up is the cable routing kit that Starlink sells. So this is what the cable routing kit looks like. It includes the drill bit, the grommets, the sealant, basically everything you need to properly route your cable through an exterior wall. And they have a version for wood homes like this one or masonry concrete brick as well. So it includes everything that you need, including these cable clips that allow you to cleanly route the cable up the side of your home to your Starlink dish. My next tip is to properly align your Starlink dish. Older Starlinks had motors. They could self-align basically. They were called actuated units and you plug them in and they'd automatically point at the correct area of the sky. Newer Starlinks, they're cheaper to manufacture and they're more reliable without those motors. And so you have to manually aim them. And it's not a big deal. It's actually really easy as I'll show you here in a second, but you wanna aim it not because Starlink has to point at a very specific satellite or anything, but because Starlink wants your dish to point at the area of the sky that has the most satellite availability. And that will increase your chances at higher performance and higher reliability. Again, Starlink thought of this and they made it as easy as possible. Just open up the Starlink app and use the alignment tool. 
you'll do this during your first initial installation and you'll probably have to never touch it again. Watch how easy it is. So you open your app and then you stand up next to your dish and you just turn it using the app as a reference here until it matches the angle and then boom, you're done. That's it, tighten down your mount. That's it, you shouldn't ever have to touch it again. A proper alignment will, like I said, ensure that your Starlink is pointing in the area of the sky that has the most satellites available and that will give you the best connection possible. Now it's important to keep in mind that the alignment is simply based on your GPS location and what area of the sky has the most availability for your specific area. It is not based on trees and buildings and other obstructions that may be surrounding your home. So if Starlink is having you point your dish directly at that tall tree to the north or northwest, that's why. They're not looking at the trees, they're looking at what area of the sky has the best satellite coverage for you, and that may be directly in the path of a tree. That's what you have to deal with in terms of mounting location and not necessarily aiming. My next tip is for those of you that don't want to use the included Starlink router. If you're not interested in using this because you have your own third party uh, gaming router or maybe an aftermarket mesh system that you wanna use with your Starlink, you can do that and it's actually super simple. So the way that you hook that up, you take this back cover off of the Starlink router and it exposes these two ethernet ports. Plug your aftermarket router into one of these ethernet ports and then go into the Starlink app because there's something called bypass mode. Bypass mode, when you enable that in your settings in the Starlink app, it turns off all of the routing functions of the Starlink router, including DHCP and the Wi-Fi radio, it turns off everything. It basically just acts as a bridge to deliver the WAN signal, the internet signal from uh, the ethernet port on the back to your third party router. So when you turn on bypass mode, that prevents something called double NAT. That's what happens when you have two routers on the same network. So bypass mode is great because it alleviates some of those weird potential network issues that you might have if you're in that double NAT situation. And don't worry, you'll still be able to use the Starlink app whenever you're in bypass mode. You'll just notice that you no longer have access to any of those network settings because all of your network settings are now managed by the third party router but you'll still have access to the statistics and other monitoring data. Also Starlink dish settings as well through that Starlink app. My next tip is to plug your Starlink system into a UPS or uninterruptible power supply. And I actually have one here, so bear with me as I lift this up. This is the APC UPS that I use in my home office. Starlink is super sensitive to power fluctuations, power outages, and power surges. One of the things that I see over and over again in various Starlink communities and through emails that come to me is that people have a power outage and a couple hours later their power comes back on but their Starlink system is not booting back up. It's completely dead and they require a new kit. You can prevent those sorts of issues with a UPS. UPS does two main things for your Starlink. First of all, it regulates the voltage that's going into your Starlink power supply and router. It's because it takes in power from the grid it regulates it through the internal circuitry, kind of buffering it through a battery as well. And then it delivers clean, uninterrupted power to your Starlink dish. The second thing that it does is provide battery backup. So in the event of an outage, the battery in a UPS is to continue to power the devices that you have plugged in, including your Starlink. That way you don't have an interrupted connection. So this next tip, I kind of had to find out the hard way on my own through troubleshooting. I had this older uh, doorbell security camera that, that ran off of Wi-Fi, and I couldn't get it to connect to my Starlink system at all. I spent a lot of time troubleshooting with the company's tech support. Come to find out, Starlink broadcasts a network that is both five gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz. It's a combined, those two bands are combined into one single Wi-Fi network. And some older devices and some even newer devices don't like that, and they won't be compatible with that combined network but there's a trick that you can do. Starlink has fixed this by allowing you to split your Wi-Fi network into two different networks, one for the five gigahertz band and one for the 2.4 gigahertz band. And what that allows you to do is ensure compatibility with some of your older Wi-Fi devices or those like my doorbell camera that just didn't work on that combined network. So if you go into your network settings and go into your network and there's a toggle switch that allows you to split the 2.4 and five gigahertz networks, that way you can connect your older devices or maybe lower priority, lower bandwidth 
even devices that are further away to that dedicated 2.4 gigahertz channel. 2.4 gigahertz tends to be more stable, especially at longer distances. So that's why I recommend you connect like security cameras and other smart home appliances to. And then your high priority devices, your high bandwidth devices like your smartphone, your PC, you can connect to that five gigahertz network. I referenced the Starlink app in this video a lot, and that's because there's so many great tools in it. And my next tip is that you should take advantage of some of the monitoring data available in this Starlink app. So if you open it up and you go into statistics, you will find things like uptime, that's called ping success, uh, latency, it measures your average latency, power draw, you can see how much power the Starlink is using. And then you can look at download, upload speeds, and throughput. And on the very bottom here, you notice something called events and outages. This is gonna tell you a lot about what is happening with your Starlink internet if you need to troubleshoot issues, maybe with obstructions. If you're getting a lot of interruptions during video calls, go ahead and check this event page and see what kind of interruptions you've had over the last 12 hours or so. It'll tell you exactly what's going on here. You can see I've got a router software update that knocked me offline for a couple minutes. There was a network interruption for one second. Uh, and then Starlink rebooting at 12.20 p.m. So there's a lot of different resources in the Starlink app. And the, one of the other things I wanted to point your attention to is using the speed test. So you can go in here, hit speed test, hit start, and this will measure the internet speed that you're getting between your Starlink dish and the Starlink network. And this is a great way to troubleshoot issues. If you're having trouble with a TV in your basement or something buffering, and you're trying to figure out if it's your dish or your maybe your Wi-Fi signal, this is a great tool to use to troubleshoot those kind of issues. As you can see here, I'm getting 261 megabits per second down, 41 megabits per second up with 23 milliseconds of latency. So a ton of good information here in the Starlink app. Another good thing to check within the app here is the obstruction page. So this is what will tell you if you have any of those obstructions like trees or buildings that are blocking your Starlink's view. So after you initially install it, this obstruction map will continue to build for up to a week, gathering data. Every time a satellite passes over, it's tracking the path and recording whether or not those communications were successful. And if you go into your obstructions page in the app and you see a lot of blue, that's great. If you see a lot of red, that means you're having issues with obstructions. And you'll probably notice some of those interruptions in that event log that I just showed you. The Starlink app is also going to give you some important informational messages if there's ever any problems with your system. For example, if your one of your mesh nodes has a poor Wi-Fi signal or the Ethernet connection between your dish and your router is slow or damaged, then you're going to be notified. So make sure you take advantage of that Starlink app and all the monitoring data that is available to you. The last tip that I have for you involves knowing how to get help if you ever have any issues with your Starlink system. Starlink is not like traditional companies or a traditional ISP where you can just pick up the phone and call a local office and have somebody come out. Starlink does support mainly through their online ticket system. So if you do ever have an issue, here's what I recommend you do. So first of all, they've got a great resource called the Help Center. If you go onto the Starlink website or you go into the app and you click support, you get basically a wealth of knowledge covering almost every Starlink topic you can imagine. So do a quick search for your issue. Maybe you're having slow speeds or maybe you're offline. Whatever the case, Starlink probably has an article explaining some of the basic troubleshooting steps that you can take. If the help center isn't helping you out, you can go further than that, scroll down a little bit, click the contact Starlink button and create a support ticket. This is your direct line of communication to Starlink. You can fill out your ticket, explain your issue, and then Starlink will get back with you with some kind of resolution. In some countries like the US and Canada, Starlink also has a phone support line. They reserve this phone line for offline issues only. So if you ever find yourself down and you can't figure it out, give Starlink a call and they will help you out over the phone. And while you're here, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to this YouTube channel because I think this is another good resource if you ever need help with your Starlink system. I've got a ton of guides tutorials, reviews, covering a range of Starlink topics. So make sure you go ahead and subscribe so you can stay up to date with all the latest happenings of Starlink. So those are some of the top tips that I think every Starlink user should know. I'd be curious, if you are a Starlink customer already, what tips do you have for new Starlink customers? If you have any other questions or issues or feedback, let me know in the comments below. I'll chat with you all there and see you in the next video.